Oh my God, what did this woman do to my hair? I swear to God, I wanna do a video about things that are better in prison than in the real world. And for me personally, one of those things has to be haircuts. Since I've been home, it's been almost a year and a half now, I have not gotten one, not one, good haircut out here in the free world. I mean, look at this. I don't even know what to call this, other than not good. In this video, this is actually part two of how to talk like a prisoner. There are so many different words and terms and sayings and phrases used while locked up that if ever you were locked up, these terms, phrases, words, and sayings are very important to know. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into this video. Starting with a common saying used in prison, I've got a date, I've got a date. What in the hell does this mean? Are you going on a date with punk tattoo guy? I've got a date is something usually your cellmate will tell you and this is fair warning to let you know that he is preparing to masturbate. <laughs> So if ever you are in a cell with a celly, whoever that celly is, even if it is punk tattoo guy, and he says to you, hey man, I've got a date. Well then you can rest assured that he is trying to tell you, hey man, go ahead and get out of here for a little while. I've got some business I need to handle. Oftentimes when a celly tells you that they have a date, they will be getting dressed up, doing their hair, preparing themselves as if they actually have a date. And I know this may sound crazy, but you have to imagine that while in prison, confidence and also confidence boosters are a big part of prison in life. Nobody in prison wants to be without their confidence. So sometimes when they are preparing to jack off faster than a jackrabbit, <laughs> they will dress themselves to their prison nines, fancy up their hair, because in their minds, they really have a date. Which also brings me to quite an ironic point. I'm a little dressed up for this video and have also fancied up my hair a little. Do I have a date? Possibly I do, just as soon as I get done filming this video. The next term that I want to tell you about in this video, there are actually two different ways to describe the same thing, one of which is referred to as bad money and the other is actually called ass betting. Bad money and ass betting pretty much mean the same exact thing. Gambling is a huge part of prison life and a very exciting way to pass the time. You can either win money or you can either lose money. And sometimes when you lose money, you can lose lots of money. And sometimes also when you lose lots of money and you do not have lots of money to pay, well then, sometimes things are gonna get a little crazy for you. And if you do gamble and lose lots of money which you don't have lots of money to pay those gambling debts, then after you have gotten your ass kicked, possibly stabbed, or even worse, you will then be deemed the name bad money or even someone who ass bets. Meaning that your money is no good, that you don't have money that you claim to have when betting, and in most cases you just won't be able to gamble anymore while in prison. I can tell you this crazy story of a guy that I knew while in prison, a young kid, who began his own gambling operation with another guy. These two guys together did not have enough money to cover that slim possibility if and when a lot of people actually won the bets that they placed with these guys. These guys were sort of like prison bookies, but they went ahead and ran this prison gambling operation under the assumption that, well, nobody was gonna win playing the odds that they had set for these football games. Well, it just so happened that not only did like one or two people actually win the bets that they placed with these guys, it was something more like 20 people won the bets that they placed with these guys. And the way that it works in prison is it's usually something like 10 times whatever you bet is what you stand a chance to win. So if you bet $1, you have the opportunity to win $10. But if you bet $10, you have the opportunity to hit for 
$100. And when these two guys opened up this prison gambling operation and something like 20 or 30 people actually won the bets that they placed with these guys, these guys owed something like $1,000 to prisoners across the entire prison compound. Well, they didn't have $1,000 to pay out. So what one of them ended up doing was checking into protective custody. Hey, prison guard, you've got to get me out of here. These guys, they want to kill me. So one of the guys, he checked into the hole. And the other guy, this guy was kind of like a friend to me in prison. Well, he actually stayed out in general population. And this guy did everything in his power by himself to pay off the entirety of this thousand dollars that they owed to guys across the prison compound. It took him something like three months to pay this money off. There were multiple different occasions when this one particular gang was about to beat the living shit out of this guy because he actually had to go to this gang to have them pay this debt off for him and then the debt ended up being owed to this gang. So I mean really this whole situation just went from bad to worse but luckily for this guy he was finally able to pay this debt off in entirety. He was deemed bad money and someone who asked bets for quite a while but after he was able to pay all of this off his name actually became good again. And he even started another gambling operation after this. You would have thought he would have learned his lesson from this. He did not. He just wanted to pass his time gambling. And uh, that's what he did. The next prison term I want to tell you about in this video actually refers to the name of a food that they serve in every single jail and penitentiary across the United States. And this meal that they are guaranteed to serve you in every single jail and prison is a breakfast meal that is referred to as shit on a shingle. Shit on a shingle is essentially biscuits and gravy, but you never have experienced biscuits and gravy like that of which you will experience while locked up. Because I have to assure you, this is one of the nastiest prison meals that they serve you out of the chow hall. This meal is absolutely disgusting. Shit on a shingle actually gets its name from the fact that this meal looks like pure tea shit served over top of a prison delicacy bread oftentimes referred to as a shingle. Reason that this prison bread or biscuit gets its nickname shingle is for the simple fact that it is oftentimes hard and stale and old and basically it is essentially something like a shingle. This is a meal that must be avoided at all costs though sometimes if you have no commissary, no ramen noodles, no honey buns, hostess cakes, zoom zooms, or wham whams that those are oftentimes referred to as, you will have to muster up the strength to eat shit on a shingle. You have not quite experienced life until you have been locked up to experience this horrible prison meal. Oftentimes while eating shit on a shingle, you will have to fight the urge to want to actually throw this up mid bite. <sighs> If somebody tells you while locked up that they are serving shit on a shingle for breakfast, well then you might as well just skip that meal altogether. Next up is a term that refers to that little hole inside of your cell bar gate door where sometimes they will serve you that horrible food from the chow hall or from the prison kitchen while locked down in your cell. And that little hole that they serve you these horrible jail or prison meals through is oftentimes referred to as a chuck hole or even more so the bean slot. The chuck hole or the bean slot is where they will oftentimes chuck your prison meal right through that hole to you inside of your cell. Sometimes you will have asshole guards who will be serving you these meals and they will do just that. Literally chuck those meals to you, you better be ready to catch them before they end up all over the floor. Other times this hole in your cell where that food is served through is referred to as the bean slot. Simply because of the fact that 9 times out of 10, no matter what the meal they are serving you in prison or jail, whether it is breakfast, lunch, or dinner, 9 times out of 10, there's gonna be beans on it. How are we having beans for breakfast? Hence the term bean slot. And while sticking with prison cells specifically, this next term, cell warriors, is a term that many out in the free world can relate to as well. There are all sorts of blank warriors. 
keyboard warriors, cell phone warriors. Well, while locked up, a cell warrior, I'm sure it's not hard to imagine, is a person who will literally just talk shit, act like they want to fight anyone and everyone while locked down inside of a cell. This doesn't happen as often as you think because you have to imagine that the repercussions once those cell doors are opened could be quite literally grave. But cell warriors while locked up are people who will talk trash while locked down in the cell. Sometimes they will even check out in the middle of the night while guards are doing their rounds. It could be two, three o'clock in the morning while all other prisoners are asleep. The guards are making their rounds and a cell warrior who is in absolute fear for his life at this point because of his cell warrior antics of earlier talking trash while locked down. Hey guard, listen to me. You gotta move me out of here. When they open these gates tomorrow, these guys are gonna kill me. I need to go to protective custody. And sometimes you will wake up the next morning, those gates will open, prisoners will immediately run with their shoes on, ready to go beat the shit out of this so-called cell warrior, only to get to the cell where that cell warrior was just at the day before and find out that he is gone. Where'd he go? Ah, that's right. He probably checked into protective custody in the middle of the night. But if ever was the case that there was a cell warrior talking trash and he did not check into protective custody in the middle of the night, then this next term refers to exactly what would happen if those gates were rolled and prisoners immediately ran toward that cell, they would then take flight. Take flight refers to throwing hands. Bang, 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 bang. If if somebody ever tells you that they're ready to take flight on you, then you might as well go ahead and take flight first. Man, you better watch it. I'm about to take flight on you. Bang, 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 don't give them a chance to take flight before you take flight first. Next up is a prison term referred to as the gun line. Now there are two different versions of the gun line while locked up. The first version is actually the very real version. There are places in prison where you cannot walk Otherwise, you are in jeopardy of probably being shot. Whether that be with some sort of a plastic round or beanbag round or an actual bullet. But there is also another gun line to worry about while locked up. And this gun line actually refers to where prisoners are masturbating at. Hey, 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 you don't want to cross that gun line back there. You're going to get shot. What the hell are you talking about? I'm just trying to take a shower. Don't cross that gun line. I'm warning you. What? What? Why didn't you tell me there was somebody back there jerking off? I just tried to tell you. Going back there means that you are crossing that gun line. Somebody may have their gun in their hand and you could very well get shot. You don't want to cross either of those two gun lines while locked up. The last prison saying or term I want to tell you about in this video is called Lambos in the Garage. Like Lamborghinis in the Garage. Lambos in the Garage refers to a prisoner having a very nice pair of shoes inside of their prison locker. And these prison Lambos are in most cases reserved for special occasions. Whether that's going to a visit or whether that's just trying to look fresh around the prison compound and Anytime that there may be a relatively attractive female staff member on the prowl somewhere, having a pair of Lambos while in prison is at times risky. You have to keep them locked up at all times because it is guaranteed other prisoners will see you wearing this fresh pair of kicks walking around the prison for whatever reason and they will want to try to steal those from you. So having a good security system on your pair of Lambos is a major necessity while locked up. And while I was locked up, I most certainly had a few different pairs of Lambos in the garage. Whether those were actually Timberland boots or all white Nike Air Force Ones. I'll tell you a sad reality. I actually had nicer shoes while I was in prison than I've had out here in the real world. What the fuck is wrong with that picture? But because I did have a few different Lambos in the garage while I was locked up, I would have friends of mine in prison who would ask me, Hey Joe, I've got a visit coming this weekend. Is there any way possible I could borrow your Lamborghinis? 
And because I tried to consider myself a relatively okay guy while locked up, I would let certain friends of mine wear my Lamborghinis. Hey look, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you think about these prison terms, words, sayings, and phrases. And I've got to kind of get out of here right now because I gotta be honest with you, I've got a date. So until next time, enjoy life, the free world, never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace! Let's give a few shout outs from yesterday's video, starting with Mikey Freaking Low TV, Siphon, your boy Eddie. Matter of fact, your boy Eddie actually commented saying, Can you do more prison slang? This video is for you, your boy Eddie. B Re, Canine Gaming, Madison M, Punk Tattoo Guy, and Lorenzo Gianni. Hey, thanks to all of you and to everyone else, and until next time, peace!